Good morning, everyone. It's Kay Jones coming at you with another video. Um, I just wanted to kind of answer a question and is, can you wear 24 karat gold daily? Um, it's very interesting. In jewelry videos, I watch a lot of them regarding fine jewelry, um, just because it's a little hobby of mine. And I really love gold. You see a lot of comments how you can't wear 24 karat gold it's too soft and then you have other people saying you can and then you say that you've got to wear lower carat and then they love 10 karat because it's durable and then people say 10 carats trash and then it's just a mess i'm here to set the record straight and kind of give some detail on that i have two 24 karat gold rings and also a 23 karat uh, bracelet that I'm currently wearing that I've been wearing for months um, day and night um, basically this is a 96.5 percent gold so um, it's not quite 24 karat but it's really close and on top of that the I sent my other uh, Thai gold pieces to Daniel Jewelry it's 96.5 percent gold and then the other 3.5 percent is silver and if y'all know anything, pure silver is pretty much as soft as gold. So I'm not sure when they're mixed together, if that makes a different tensile strength, but um, I don't think it's any stronger than the 24 karat because of that, because the only alloy is pure silver, which is just as soft as gold, <clears throat> pure gold. So um, I wanted to kind of share my experience. In this video, I'll go ahead and show close-ups too of the bracelet and the rings so you can see the color differences and the dents and whatnot whatever now note that the video i believe is in 6k so because it's in 6k you're gonna really see close-up detail reality is when you wear these rings you know from the distance like this it's not gonna be the as banged up so anyway i've been wearing these day and night um, the only time I take off these rings is really when I'm at the gym and lifting weights. And even then I have some weights at my apartment that have some bands around them to where I don't even take off the rings there. Um, and then I've never taken off this since I bought it. Um, and it's got a little clasp here and I don't like to stretch the S clasp. So I just leave it off on indefinitely in the shower everywhere. Um, I don't really take it off unless I absolutely have to, and there hasn't been a case where I've had to do that. So let's get into it. Um, first of all, disclaimer, I think any jewelry is wonderful, and it, I'm not here to flex or anything. Reality is I wore a 10 karat gold chain for five years, day and night, never took it off. I absolutely adored it and loved it. So much so that I could not trade it in and get rid of it. I passed it down to my brother because it was very sentimental. I love it. He loves it. And I have that same exact chain being made by Daniel Jewelry Inc. Um, it's a Cuban link that's going to be made in 24 karat gold for my neck. So um, I just want to kind of show that I don't, I, I think it's all within your budget. Most people can't spend that kind of money on 24 karat gold. It's not reasonable when you have kids and bills and everything like that. Never spend money outside your comfort zone. Um, if you if you don't have plentiful in savings, don't do it. It's not worth it. That being said, you know, even if you do have the money, it doesn't matter. You can buy 10 karat gold, plated gold, vermel, silver, um, hollow gold if you want. I mean, I don't recommend that because it breaks easily and the quality isn't usually as up to par. 14 karat, 18 karat, 24 karat, whatever you want, whatever makes you happy and fits your financial budget. Or maybe you have the money, you just don't want to drop that kind of money on jewelry and find it ridiculous. Whatever works for you, get it. Don't feel like that you are lesser because of the carrot gold you wear. I think that's ridiculous. I think it's only imbeciles who think that. Um, in fact, I love silver. I love steel. I love brass and copper. Honestly, I love all metals and I think metallurgy is incredible. And it just is a huge fascination of mine, including titanium, iron, just all of that. I really think anything from the elements of the earth is fantastic. All right, let's get into it. So 
if you do wear, you can wear 24 karat gold daily. I mean, I kind of answered that at the beginning of the video by saying I wear it daily. That being said, you do need to buy thick pieces. Don't ever buy thin 24 karat gold because it will bend and it is malleable. Later in this video, I'll show you that even though you see cuts and scrapes and whatnot on these rings and such, because it is a softer uh, type of metal with no alloys, the weight has maintained the same. There's been no weight change from when I first bought them. And I even show you the certificate of authenticity, authenticity to show you um, what their original weight was. Um, I have not weighed the bracelet because I haven't taken it off, but the truth is the hands, these are 24 karat gold and the hands go through the most damage. I'm constantly using my hands. If anything is going to be the most banged up and lose metal, it's going to be the hands. So these are two pieces from Monet. All of these pieces have been XRF machine tested. Um, although, you know, it's just, I don't know how else to just say that they are what they are. Um, so, uh, you want to get thick 24 karat gold pieces. You know, you want them to have some girth to it so they don't bend or anything. You're still going to get dinks and scratches in them. Some people don't like that. They think that's ridiculous and they just don't like their jewelry banged up. Why am I going to spend this much money for it to get banged up and even like dings and whatnot? For me, I like it. I think it gives it character. I think it's just part of pure 24 karat gold. And I think it's a uniqueness about it. Um, and it's just part of the metal, you know, and what comes with it if you wear it as jewelry. And it's almost like it goes on an adventure with you. It changes as you go through your life, but you don't, as long as I don't lose that gram weight of gold, I'm not concerned. I love it. Um, my bracelet has taken significantly less dinks. Dings, dinks, I don't know, dings. Um, and I, it, obviously that makes sense because it's on your wrist rather than something you're constantly using your hands for. Um, and I would imagine a necklace would be similar, if not even less than a bracelet. You are going to see some very light scratching, I suppose. Um, but I mean, you know, I mean, it looks like gold. It's not, it's, it has imperfections, but it's a lot cleaner than my rings so i'm going to show you all those those videos and you can decide you know your opinion you can put it in the comments below what do you wear for jewelry and you know did you find this video fascinating um so one thing i'd like to add before i show you those clips is that people confuse gold to be an investment it's as an accountant and somebody who you know got their undergrad in finance and their master's in accounting technically gold is not really an investment it's a non-producing asset so for example it is especially when you buy it as jewelry first of all you're paying a premium i think on this ring i paid a 15 percent premium so 15 percent over spot price and that's because I had a bunch of discount codes and I had a situation with customer service and basically they hooked me up. This ring was a 30% premium. And if you buy gold from Thailand or overseas, you can get a lot cheaper. So this was a 10% premium. Okay, so uh, actually 15%. It was also 15% because I had to pay for shipping and you know the fees that go with it overall and the PayPal fees and whatnot. Um, so yeah. And you're paying a premium, and so you're not going to get the return on your per. Your, your per you're going to always hold the purchasing value of gold, but you're not going to get a return on your premium on jewelry until you, on roughly 15 to 30 years later, depending on how much your premium was above spot price. I hope that makes sense. But why gold is, in my opinion, it is opinion based, is not a good investment is because it's a non-producing asset. And uh, do I think it holds your purchasing power against inflation? Absolutely. So inflation right now is I think 7%, it's gone down. Gold has only gone up. So when I bought these pieces, gold was $53 a gram, and now it's $62 a gram. It will fluctuate constantly, but if you look at gold in the past 100 years, um, in, in consideration also for inflation. So this is 
uh, adjusted for inflation, it has just had a steady increase, which is great. It's had its ebbs and flows, but the line curve is like this. So your purchasing power is being held. Are you technically getting a return on your investment if you just buy gold coins and whatnot? Um, investment. I would say yes, but you're looking, this investment has such a low return. A non-producing asset is so much different if you were to buy farmland. Farmland is going to increase in value over time so much more than gold. And in fact, you can produce things on the farmland such as crops. You can get cattle to have on the farm and then you can have the cattle sold for beef. You can do peanuts or corn. You can, it's a producing asset. So in my opinion, anything that brings back a substantial return, at least of the United States Treasury, um, the same return as it, that's a producing asset where gold is so, such a low return that if not no return, if you buy jewelry, um, you know, you break even maybe 20, 30 years from now. I don't know. It depends on how smart you buy and things like that. I just think it's more of something that holds your purchasing power. Don't buy gold as an investment. Buy it to hold your wealth. And I think it will hold your wealth and your dollar so much more than having money in savings. Then again, <laughs> you need to know where to sell gold. You can't just go to some gold buyer and try to sell your gold because they're going to give you way lower than market value. You have to know where to go and things like that. But anyway, that's beside the point. Here are the clips. I hope you enjoy. Um, here are the close-ups in detail. And if you have any questions, you can drop them in the comments below. Okay, so I showed y'all the rings. These are dirty. Have not cleaned them for this video. Sorry about that. Um, and here's the bracelet in case you're kind of curious about the um, color difference between 96.5% gold and 24 karat. You can see 24 karat's a little bit richer in hue. Honestly, you can't really tell the difference um, too much. It's so minimal and they're different cuts. For example, this bracelet has diamond cuts in it. You know what I'm saying? Um, like let's see those cuts. So it's gonna give off a different glare also where these are matte, the rings. Um, but they're very close. That 3.5% does make a slight difference. You can see it more so on this ring than this one because of the lighting. Maybe I can change this over here. But anyway, you can kind of see a little bit of a color difference. So wearing these every day for months, I wanted to show you all how the weight does not change. Um, so when you see scratches and deformities, um, you're basically, you know, the weight is not changing. It's just going in different areas. So we've got 14 grams for this one. And when I bought it, it was at 13.98. Here, as you can see, this is the certificate, whatever that may, Monet gives you. Put it again, 14 grams. I wanna get a scale that shows the decimal places, but this one just rounds up. So sorry about that. And then the other ring is 11.22 uh, grams. So it would just theoretically show 11. There we go, 11. So I've been wearing these for months, no changes in gram weight. 
and it's just something I wanted to show. I will buy one that shows the decimal marks um, on, off of Amazon, but just for this video, I wanted to kind of show how that was not too significant of a problem with 24 karat gold. Nevertheless, I will do an update video probably a year from now and do it with the percentage, the, the decimal places and whatnot um, so y'all can see the difference then. I hope y'all have an amazing day and I hope that this uh, video was insightful and when I get my necklace from Daniel's Jewelry, I would absolutely love to do a review and show it to y'all. Thanks so much and uh, may the force be with y'all always.